All right, so teammates, what I'm going to do tonight is that I'm going to build on the training that we did last week. Last week, we did ambitiously attacking the numbers. Well, this week, guess what? We're going to talk about building an ambitious schedule. Building an ambitious schedule, right? And so, because um, I think that <laughs> that's important. We talk about all these things we want to do. I want to conquer the world. I want to make all this money. I want to do this. I want to do that. These are my goals and all that type of stuff. Blah, blah, blah. But I got one day a week to do the business, Shadrika. How can I make it happen with one day a week? Ah. How are you going to be ambitious and lofty with your goals and dreams, but you ain't ambitious with your schedule? And so we're going to talk about that. But we're going to talk about it in a way not to throw a guilt trip on you or anything like that. What I want to do is I want to just kind of paint a picture for you about some things that I've just come to understand when it comes to Prime America. Nothing deep, but just some simple stuff, man. Things that you guys have probably heard me say or even doing a training before. But hopefully you can see my screen, right? Building an ambitious schedule. Making time to achieve your goals, making time to achieve your goals. See, I'm telling you, man, I mean, you, you can want the world, but if you got time, you know, for, for, for uh, um, a, a, a little piece of turf, then that's where the rubber meets the road. You can't have the world. If you only got time for it, it's just a little piece of turf. All right. And so this is what I was taught early on in the business. And it's always stuck with me. It said, you know, somebody told me that money or the cost or the price of something is only an issue when there's an absence of value. But then the one that really got me, this was the one. You know, it talked about, man, cost, price, and stuff like that. Like, man, people will pay a certain amount of money if they feel that the value is there. Let me prove it to you. When Beyonce rolled into town on that Renaissance tour, and them tickets was higher than a giraffe's head. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> tickets was high. You know, you know, she ain't go everywhere. You know, folks traveled in from, from neighboring states to come to that concert. You know what I'm saying? You had, you know, it was here in Houston. She was here in Houston for two days. You had folks that was in the house. How many days? Erica? Both days. And they paid a lot of money for that. God, I'm just talking about the ticket. You ain't even talking about the shiny outfit they had. We talking about the pre-game festivities and all that type of stuff that they spent to have the evening. Because it was an experience. It was the evening before the concert, during the concert, after the concert. And that was, that was an expensive weekend for some folks. People taking their daughters, their nieces. Man, paychecks was statement. A, a, a lot of borrowing from 401ks went on. Um, a lot of life insurance policies didn't get paid. Did y'all notice the policy master activity report kind of went crazy around the Beyonce concert? Uh, we the only ones that watch. Okay, I got you. But see, people saw value in that. So they was willing to pay all that money for a ticket. Let me tell you something, man. Another thing. Rahima and her sisters, they went to Vegas to see Usher at the end of the year. It's a true story. Went to see Usher. Man, it was his last show. That last weekend. Had a blast, right? Didn't invite us. Me and my brother-in-law didn't invite us. I just gave us a mess about that a couple of days ago. Negro went on a trip, didn't invite me nowhere. Oh, you know about I was like, yeah, I didn't get no invite. Just rolled up on me talking about it. Yeah, we going here. I, I, well, I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. I thought it was a safe space. I'm just venting a little bit. But um, but one of her friends, one of her sorority sisters, said, you know what? That's my birthday weekend. I'm going to come too. 
Last minute. Oh, y'all already know where I'm going with this. Anything last minute going to cost what? It's going to cost more. It's going to cost less. More. Last minute. The fly to Vegas. And not just fly to Vegas tonight, but she going to go to the concert too. I ain't going to even say what she paid for her ticket. My mouth won't even say that number what she paid for the ticket to go to Usher. But it was valuable to her. Price, cost is only an issue when there is an absence of value. So I don't want you to ever let anybody tell you that they don't have $99 to do primarily. It's a lie. It's a lie. Or this month, I don't have $49 to do Primerica. It's simply not true. Cost is only an issue when there's an absence of value. Well, just like I illustrated that cost is only an issue when there's an absence of value, the big one that I want y'all to understand, this is the one. Time is only an issue when there's an absence of value. It's only an issue. Those two things, guys, cost, or you can say price or money, and time are only issues when there's an absence of value. And when I saw that, that time one, guys, that's the one that got me. That got me. Can we, be, can we keep it 100? You can always get more money, Shadrika. You can always make more money. Yeah, I spend $1,000, $1,500 on a ticket to go see so-and-so. Man, I had a great time. Man, depending on the kind of work you're doing, you're going to eventually make that $1,500. Y'all with me? But I can't get my time back. So time is the most important thing and commodity that we have, more valuable than money. And time is only an issue when there's an absence of value. So when you see that time is only an issue in an absence of value, Talana, what it's really saying is that what you value is what you will make time for. What you value is what you make time for. Guys, you don't have to tell me how important Primerica is to you. You don't have to say that. You don't have to claim it. You don't have to share it. I can observe it. I can see it. Because if you're making time for it, mm, I know that it means something to you. I know that it's value, valuable to you. And that's the truth. Because you're only going to spend your time in things and in places that are valuable to you. Am I right or am I right? That's right. Well, Nick, I got to spend time on my job and I don't really want to be there to do that. I'll okay. put that here in a second. Because it ain't necessarily the job that you value. But it's what the, the job impacts. That's what you value. All right, so this is the reality. What do you value? What do you value? Well, we all have 24 hours in a day. Queen, that breaks down to 168 hours a week that we all have. Everybody starts with this number every day that God blesses us and allows us to wake up. Thank you, God. You wake up, you got 24 hours. It don't matter if you are black, if you are white, if you are Hispanic, if you are an Asian or Pacific Islander, it doesn't matter if you are American, if you are Canadian, if you are European, if you are African, whatever the case may be, it doesn't matter if you have a GED, a high school diploma, college degree, graduate degree. It doesn't matter if you make $18 an hour 
or if you make $18 billion a year, it doesn't matter. Everybody starts with the same number of hours in their bank every single day. 24 hours, that equates to 168 hours a week. But the question becomes, family, what do you value? What do you value? I submit humbly, I submit that these are some of the things that kind of encompass what you value. I humbly submit this. Job or business, you value that. Well, Nick, I don't like my job. You know, them folks get on my nerves. I need to find a new job. I got you. But you know what you do value? The paycheck, whether it's a big one or a small one. So you endure whatever you have to do to get that money. Am I right or am I right? Because you need that money. We live in a capitalist-based society to where if you don't work, man, you don't have. And so you need that money, so you value, so you spend time on the job, probably a disproportionate of time when it comes to everything else that's related to your life. Same thing with a business. Same thing with a business. You're trying to make some money because you know the money impacts things. It, 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 can, it can and allow you to achieve a certain lifestyle, a certain station in life. So you spend time working in building, intending to your business. Income, money-making activities, whether it's on a job and a business or both. You value that. You value that. What else? You spend time with your spouse or your partner. Why? Because hopefully you value that relationship. And relationships take time. So hopefully you guys spend time together, right? Same thing with kids or grandkids. You value that connection. You value the, um, the, 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 the opportunity to be able to mold and shape and nurture that young person. And so you value that. So you spend time there. Same thing with family and friends in church, right? All of these things, people that you love and care about, guess what? You value those connections. You need those connections. They fill you. They allow you to give and receive. So you spend time there. Same thing with community. Some people are very active in their community. They're doing this in the community. They're over here in the community. They're doing this as a, you know, as a toy drive, as a giveaway is a community, like a system, whatever the community, all community activity, or it might just be things that, well, man, we're doing a block party. We just want to have people come out and have fun. All, just community-related activities, you name it. Some people like spending their time there because they value that. They value the opportunity to be able to give back. Then another big one is entertainment. Now, entertainment can range. Entertainment, guys, it could be just sitting on the couch watching TV. A lot of people value that. That's the way that they decompress. That's the way that they just unwind, right? Entertainment, going to a concert, going to a comedy show, right? Going to the movies, going bowling. Y'all get what I'm saying. Going to any type of vacation or whatever the case may be, that is part of what people value. And then I'm gonna run through the next things that are on the list, exercise and making sure that you have, a, you have, you value being in your best health, right? So exercise, it might be where you spend some of the time. We're talking about 24 hours a day, 168 hours a week. Eating, <laughs> you need to eat. So you spend time doing that, sleeping. There's time you spend doing that, man, whether it's from four hours, six hours, eight hours, however many hours of sleep you average on a night, seven hours, you get what I'm saying, sleeping, because you value your body being able to recover. And then everything else can be considered kind of miscellaneous, whether it's running errands, doing this, doing that. I mean, you spend time doing all those things because you value the byproduct of those things. 
And not necessarily you value those things outside of spouse, kids, family, friends, and try to get that. But you value the benefits of what these things bring and where you spend time there, right? But let's talk about this one in particular up here. This is the one where people spend, like I said, oftentimes a disproportionate amount of their time. Most people work eight plus hours a day for 40 plus hours a week. And they do that for about 40 years of their life. That's most people's journey in America. That's what they do. And so when you think about that, this is what I want you to understand. The average person, I didn't make this up. I got this from um, kind of like the Bureau of Labor Statistics and stuff like that. It's a website out, excuse me, out there. It says the average person, Kui, will spend 90,000 hours at work over a lifetime. I want you to think about that. What that equates to, Erica, that's about one third of your life. Mom, people will spend one third of their life at work. Why is that? And, and, and can, I, can, 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 can I get an agreement that most people are working on jobs that they really don't care for? So if you're doing something that you really don't enjoy or doesn't give you the level of fulfillment, whether it's not, it, it, it doesn't, it, meaning you wouldn't do it for free if given the choice. You know what I'm saying? You're doing it because, hey, it pays me a certain amount. I, 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 I'm, I'm not just, some people hate what they do, but you can tolerate what you do. The pay is pretty decent. I can kind of make it, y'all get what I'm saying? but I'm not running out the house or logging on to the computer quick, fast, in a hurry every day to go do it. They spend a third of their life working. What are we valuing? What is it? Is it just the paycheck? Guys, the statistics are true. Most people are spending a third of their life 90, over 90,000 hours in their lifetime working and they still not able to save and invest enough money to retire with some dignity. Y'all ain't hear me. To what end? So who's really, who's really, who's really winning? Who's really winning? Because we've been taught and we've been told and we've been, you know, programmed to think that, hey, you got to do it this way. And you do it that way. And you spend the third of your life hours wise doing it that going way. To work. Doing it that way. But you never get what you want. Sure, you might buy a car on a vacation or two but do you really get what you want see these are the things that matter to me and i hope that they matter to you because i think about you when i'm doing these things and i'm thinking about these i think not just about raheem and i i think about you guys because you guys are our extended family and so this ties into our theme for this year when i say we're going to build a big base shop of competent independent producers and field trainers and all the type of stuff. Some of you guys get caught up in that part, Cheryl. Some of them get caught up with that. Nick just want to get a bunch of people to go out and produce and this, that, and no, 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 no. That's necessary. That first part, Auntie, is necessary. We got to build a big base shop of competent independent producers and field trainers that do what? Make money and save money. See, you can't make money, real money. I'm talking about change your situation type money and save the type of money that you can to where you can retire not only with some dignity, but maybe retire early. Come on, somebody. Man, I mean, that's the room I want to be in. Y'all talking about retiring early? Yes. Retire early, 
that requires building a big bay shop of competent independent producers and field traders. I ain't saying that all the independent producers and field traders are under just Raheem and I. Some of them need to be under who? who? Make money and save money. That's what this is. And so with that being said, guys, and I'm almost done. I promise y'all I'm almost done. I'm almost done. How are you going to create your 2024 weekly schedule? Because you got to build an ambitious schedule. And this ties into everything that I've been talking about this whole year. I'm not saying anything new. Step one, determine the goals you want to accomplish this year that cost money. Some of you haven't even done that yet. You haven't done that yet. What do you want? Because none of this works on the level that I'm talking about. Unless you figure out, baby, what do you want that costs some money this year? That's step one. Step number two, put a dollar amount next to it. If you're really serious about it, do the research, do the work. Find out what it is. Some of it's easy. If it's we're knocking out a credit card, you already know the balance of that. If you have a savings number, you already got that number in your head. But if it's something like a vacation or if it's a down payment on a man, do the research. What is that going to take? All that. Figure it out to the dime, to the penny. What is it going to cost you? Put a dollar amount next to each goal that you want to accomplish. That's step number two. And then step number three. Hold on a second. This is it. Oh, that was an extra slide in there, guys. Forgive me for that. Determine. This is for people who only have a life insurance license. If you got a securities license, I would do the same thing. I would just treat the securities transactions as extra icing on the cake. Step number three is determine how many life insurance policies you need to sell in order to achieve you each goal. It said C. Um, correcting that real quick. How many life insurance policies do you need to sell in order to achieve each goal? You got your goals. You got them, right? I know you do. Hopefully you do. You put the dollar amount next to it. And based on the numbers that we ran last week, you know the math. You know how to do it now. How many life insurance policies do you need to sell? Do you need to sell to achieve each goal? Find that out. So I want to do this. It costs this much money based on my contract level, this, that, and the other, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, this is how many policies I need to sell in order to knock this goal out on a senior rep contract on a district leader contract. Step number three is a big one, guys. Because step number three, for some of you all, it's going to be a lot of policies. It's going to be a lot of policies for some of your goals, depending on the size of your goal. And what I encourage you to do is figure out how you can get promoted to a higher contract and make it easier on yourself. Are you with me? So some of you guys trying to figure these things out and creating that ambitious schedule, I mean, it's going it's to be cool. It's going to be a domino effect. You're going to be like, boy, <laughs> some of y'all going to walk away. If you do these numbers, which I hope you do, teammate, you're going to be like, I need to be district tomorrow. I need to become a district leader tomorrow. I need to become a division leader tomorrow. I need to become a regional leader. I need to become a regional vice president tomorrow. Because if I can get that contract, it'll cut down the policy requirement that's necessary to achieve my goal. I'm going somewhere with this. Reshare my screen. So after you determine how many life insurance policies you need to sell to achieve your goal, step number four is you need to determine, based on how many policies you can sell, how many first-time qualified Zoom appointments you need to schedule to achieve 
each goal. That's what you need to do. You need this many policies, basically however many policies you need. That's going to help you determine how many uh, first time appointments you need to schedule. And then along with that, last two steps, you need to determine your weekly availability. You need to look at your schedule because you make time for what you value. Determine your weekly availability. When am I available during the week? If I got to sell this many policies to reach my goals and my goals are important to me, they're valuable to me. I want to get that done this year. So this is how many policies I need to sell. And in addition to that, to sell that many policies, I've got to schedule this many appointments. I don't have enough time in my schedule. It might be something that you need to examine. And that's why I'm saying determine your weekly, based on when you want to get it done, determine your weekly availability. Determine that. How many days out of the week can you set aside not to do Primerica? Don't stop there, but to do Primerica in order to achieve your goals this year. How many days of the week can you comfortably set aside? Well, let me take comfortably out of there because it's probably going to be uncomfortable. And that's the reality. It's probably going to be a little bit uncomfortable. All right. And then number six. Confront any disconnects. Confront any disconnects you have and get to work. Because I guarantee you, you do all of that. You go through step one. Step two, step three, step four. By the time you get to step five, there's going to be some disconnects in there. It's going to be a reckoning. And you're going to have to look yourself in the face and say, hey, is this something that I really want? And I want you to confront those disconnects. I don't want you to abandon ship on your goal. I don't want you to tell yourself, well, man, that was just a pipe dream. No. I want you to stand up on the inside and I want you to know that this is that opportunity that's going to help you get there and you got some foxhole buddies that's going to link up with you to help you do it. But confront your disconnects, whatever they may be. And let's get to work. Let's get to work. And so what we're going to start talking about next week are fundamentals that will help you execute to perfection making sure that you're going to hit your goals. We're going to start our fundamental series, making sure that your skills are on point and on tight. So we need everybody to plug in. Start, I mean, don't miss training. Man, we need you plugged in and tapped in because this is you getting better for you, right? This is you getting better for you. And with that being said, guys, I want to end. I, I, I normally do the, 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 the mamba moment in the beginning, but I'm going to end on it. And then I'm going to pass over Rahima for, um, for announcements. But this is the Mamba moment right here, right? So this is this is this is something that um that that I, that I got out of the book, and it just resonated with me. And the section is called "Just Do It." This is what this is a quote from Kobe. He says, "Check this out, Mom." He says, "I never thought." <laughs> that's, that's through. Okay. <laughs> let me let me hey, let me let me get it right. I don't want to mess it up. I want to get it right. He said, and I quote, I'm about to get in here. Check it out. He said, Man, I never thought about my daily preparation. It wasn't a matter of whether it was an option or not. It was, if I want to play, this is what I have to do. So I just show up and do it. I want you to read what this says in light of everything that we just talked about. 
Kobe said, man, I just, I never thought about my daily preparation. All the time I had to put in, all of the lifting, all of the shooting, all of the stretching, all the, just the grunt work to be able to become great. And like, I was already a gifted and talented person, but that wasn't enough. It wasn't a weekly preparation. It wasn't a month. It was a daily preparation. I never thought about my daily preparation. It wasn't a matter of whether it was an option or not. I knew it was an option. I never thought about it. I never negotiated the price of greatness. I never did that. It was if I want to play, if I want to achieve my goal and dream, if I want to make it happen, this is what I have to do. So I just show up. And do it. Guys, the show up that I want you to do is to show up for you. Not for me. Not for Rahima. Show up for you. Let's confront our disconnects and let's go get to work. Guys, we got 48 hours till month end. Let's close with a vengeance. Let's give it all we got and let's make something big and special happen in the life of your business. And I promise you guys, the best is on its way. It's yet to come because this is going to be the year that we dominate. And I'm so excited about what's about to happen in the life of your business and our business together. Love you guys.